So obviously the 50 series launch has not been very smooth. From disappointing performance to like missing ROPs, when I say that this right here is the best 50 series card that Nvidia probably launched this year, I feel like compared to what? This is the new RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte. Now that VRAM capacity is very important. The 8 gigabyte version of this card is also out, so I just don't want you guys to mix it up because whatever I say about this card is only about this card. Everything was tested with this toggled on performance mode paired with the 9800X3D and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. Before we get into the benchmarks here, are the specs to keep in mind for this card. This right here specifically is the ASUS Tough Gaming GeForce RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabytes OC edition. We have 4,608 CUDA cores. The OC mode of this card clocks at 2690. 2 megahertz. We have 16 gigabytes of GDDR7 VRAM, a memory speed of 28 gigabits per second, and this card has a recommended PSU of 550 watts. I decided to test out this card in both 1080p and 1440p since these are probably the two resolutions people are trying to play with a GPU like this. Although it actually can run 4K gaming decently well, but that's going to be a little bonus I add in the end. For this resolution, I decided to try five games. The first three are the uh, graphically intensive games like Cyberpunk, and the last two are going to be esports titles like Valorant. For Cyberpunk, we have the game at ray tracing medium, but we actually ran four different tests. I don't know why I keep saying we when it's just me. The first test is going to be this preset with no help from DLSS, so no upscaling and no frame gen. Then we're going to get into upscaling, but no frame gen, then upscaling scaling with 2x frame gen, and then lastly, upscaling with 4x frame gen. So we're going to test out the new 50 series 4x multi-frame whatever in the last one. And starting off with the zero AI help, we are able to run this game at around 70 FPS. Honestly, pretty good. This game is actually really hard to run, especially without any upscaling help. But what's really nice is that our base latency is around 30 milliseconds, and this will give us a little bit of wiggle room when we use frame generation, and with upscaling, it should boost it up a little bit. With just upscaling on auto, we are able to get an average of 97 fps with the help of the extra frames and boost in performance like i said the latency goes down to around 22 milliseconds then when we finally use the 2x frame gen the latency does go up to around 29 milliseconds but our average fps also goes up to 160 and finally with the help of the new multi-frame generation returning on 4x frame gen we're getting around 277 average fps with that latency being around 36. yes visual artifacting is there but if you are someone who's really worried about latency this is completely fine it's really playable and i just want to mention this is the only game that i did four different tests for uh everything else i'll just do one test but i will do all four tests for the 1440p test as well next moving on to a little easier game to run hogwarts legacy i used their benchmark features to get the recommended presets and they gave us pretty much high to ultra presets and ultra ray tracing presets we use upscaling here and 4x frame gen and i made sure to also have ray reconstruction on and this is going to be really important like keep that in mind okay and with all of this, we're hitting a solid 240 FPS, hitting our refresh rate on our monitor. Goodness. And our latency was at around 38 milliseconds, which results in a great gaming experience for a story mode game like this. Now I also ran Forza Horizon, a very, very, very well optimized game with the maxed out preset, and we can see that we got 222 FPS. Moving on to esports titles, just know that the CPU is really what does the heavy lifting, especially for a game like Valorant, and I have the 9800X3D. You probably shouldn't use that CPU for a GPU like this. But we are getting around 800 to 900 FPS, but look at our latency, what the hell of nvidia's reflex technology we are bringing it down to 2.1 milliseconds anyways to everyone's favorite game fortnite to stress the gpu just a little bit i made sure to use the medium preset so we can see that we're around 300 fps Honestly, for someone who just wants to play esports games, I don't see why you would need the new 50 series card. Just get yourself the 30 series or the 40 series and you'll be completely fine. I scrapped all the esports title for this one. We're just going to go with the three uh, GPU intensive games. For Cyberpunk, once again, we're using ray tracing medium and we're going to do all four of the tests. With zero help from DLSS, we're at 41 FPS. It's playable, but not enjoyable. But let's boost this up with upscaling with no frame gen and we see a jump to 75 fps which is much smoother and much enjoyable and honestly i'd be more than happy to play a game like this at this much fps but let's go ahead and turn on 2x frame gen and we see that it jumps to 118 fps and finally 4x is at 200 fps and then jumping into hogwarts legacy same as how we did in 1080p we are using the recommended presets with ray reconstruction on again keep that in mind with dls upscaling and 4x frame gen we are hitting 150 to 170 fps 
but our latency did go up to around 54 milliseconds, which is honestly okay for a game like this. Uh, I do think anything over like 65 milliseconds is when I, I cannot, like my brain does not like it at all. I feel sort of gross, but honestly, 52 milliseconds was not that bad of a gaming experience for me. And finally, at the max out preset for Forza Horizon at 1440p, we dropped down to 133 FPS. I'll be honest, I don't know if it's just because I had like a terrible expectation for this card, but I think it's crushing it so far. The fact that we can play games like these at such high settings and actually enjoy the experience with a 60s card is pretty cool to me. But I will say though, if you're not someone who's trying to utilize all the new AI features that the 50 series kind of, you know, promote, then don't skip this version. Honestly, go with the 40 series, go with the 30 series. It's not worth the new price tag, especially with, I don't even know how much this is gonna be like in real life. And I know I promised you guys a bonus 4K uh, testing portion of this video, but before we do, once again, this is the 16 gigabyte version. So if you guys watch this video and you're like, okay, maybe this is the card for me, keep that in mind. Make sure you read 16 gigabytes. And also please don't overpay for your GPUs this year. This is not a 4K card. I just wanted to see how well it can do with a game like Forza Horizon and Hogwarts Legacy. <laughs> and honestly, it's pretty good. Uh, 4K extreme settings for Forza Horizon, we're hitting around 105 FPS. But this game is pretty easy to run. So in Hogwarts Legacy though, I had to do a little bit of tweaking. Obviously we have to use DLSS. I wanted to use 4X frame engine and hit around 150-ish FPS, a little bit more maybe, but our latency can't be like too crazy high. And I had to turn off ray reconstruction. I told you to keep that in mind and look at this. Seriously, it ran beautifully. I really do hope this was a helpful video. I'm not sponsored by ASUS or NVIDIA for this. Uh, they sent this out for me to benchmark. They sent this out to a lot of people to benchmark. And this was just my opinion. They didn't get to read the script or see anything like that. So they're probably watching it uh, same as you guys. So 